Hi, and welcome to Rhino Basics. This video tutorial series is a basic introduction into Rhino 3D and is designed to provide a foundation for exploring more specific interests later on. When you open up Rhino, you're going to be asked to select a template file. You'll notice that we have both large and small templates to choose from. The difference between large and small templates relates to the grid area that we'll be working on and also the, the spacing between the points on those grids. For what we want to do, I suggest that you start with large objects and inches. To give you a brief overview of the interface in Rhino, at the very top we have a bunch of different menus with uh, categories that are probably familiar in some cases. So the file menu, for instance, is where we would save a file or open up a file or print something. The edit menu is going to allow us to edit things, so copying and pasting and doing some other types of commands like that. The curve menu is going to allow us to create two-dimensional elements like lines, curves, points. The surface menu is going to allow us to create surfaces from those elements. The solid menu is going to give us tools for creating solids, so things like boxes, spheres, etc., etc. The dimension menu is going to give us tools for dimensioning things, so if we wanted to measure dimensions or distances between things, we would use tools in that menu. And finally, the transform menu, which allows us to transform things that already exist, so scaling something or rotating or copying, those sorts of commands are found under the transform menu. On the left hand side you'll notice a whole bunch of different icons and also across the the top of the screen. All these icons will start commands and all these commands or most of the commands anyways are found under all the menus as well. Hovering over top of one of these icons um, you'll notice that there's a preview for what happens when you left click or when you right click. In general, in, this, in these tutorials, unless I specify otherwise, when I say click, I mean a left click. Uh, so you'll notice right now we have an option. If, we, if I were to left click, I would start the polyline command. If I were to right click, I would start the line segments command. You'll also notice that there's a small triangle on the, on the right hand side of some of these icons. And that triangle tells me that there's other commands available behind that command. So in other words, if I were to just left click and hold that mouse button for a second, uh, I have now a whole bunch of different options for other types of commands. You can also grab the top of this flyout command like I've just done and drag it out. And when you do that, this now becomes a separate toolbar, just like these are toolbars on the side and on the top. And so this toolbar will now remain here indefinitely until I actually close it clicking on the red button. At the bottom of the screen we have the object snaps area and this is a very powerful set of tools that can also get you into a lot of trouble if you're not careful. So for to start off with we want to make sure that uh, that nothing is actually selected in here. If you don't see this on your screen uh, make sure that object snaps is actually enabled down here. So it's enabled right now. I can see what's going on and I can see that nothing is selected. We have at the very top here the command prompt and the command prompt is sort of Rhino's consciousness. It's what Rhino is thinking right now and right now it's asking me for a command so I'm not in a command. We'll get into the command prompt pretty soon here. And finally we have our viewport area which uh, gives us windows into the space that we're working in. So we have a perspective viewport which gives us a perspective view of the space and then we have three other viewports top right and fr uh, front and right. And these are plan views which means that things are, are we're looking at things without perspective kind of head-on so to speak. So to show you how this works, maybe the best thing to do is to just go ahead and create something. And we're going to do that by selecting the T here, which is a text object tool. So left click on that. And I'm going to just enter something in here. And want to make sure that solids is selected and also that group objects is not selected. Click OK. And we're now ready to insert this text somewhere. I want you to go ahead and insert it into the perspective viewport so that that's the 
the the top right viewport and just left click to place it to navigate in the perspective viewport we can zoom in and out by using our scroll wheel on the mouse we can rotate by holding down our right mouse button while dragging the mouse and we can pan by hitting the shift key and the right mouse button while dragging so zoom rotate pan the top front and right viewports are a little bit different because there's no rotation involved in these three viewports so while a right mouse button will rotate in perspective view the right mouse button in the other views will simply pan so I can pan in any one of these views by just right clicking and dragging. I can also zoom in like I was before just using the, the scroll wheel on the mouse. You may sometimes find yourself in a situation where perhaps uh, your model isn't fully visible in all the, the windows or you might be totally lost and if that happens just come up to this icon and right click on that and that will sort of maximize everything in your scene in all the viewports at the same time. Another useful tool is the zoom selected command. So right now in, in the perspective view, for instance, I'm rotating around this whole object. But what if I just want to rotate around the, the, the H, for instance, selecting it with the left mouse button and then coming up to zoom selected and left clicking will zoom whatever I have selected. So that's now central to the viewport and now when I rotate I'm just rotating around that element that I've selected so this can be really useful when you want to look at something from different perspectives and uh, and it's difficult otherwise to get it zoomed in properly so I could jump jump from letter to letter simply selecting and then left clicking on the zoom selected to to change the focus of where I'm actually rotating the zoom selected in the uh, the other viewports uh, while I can't rotate I can certainly still zoom in just on that se selection so uh, that will work in any one of these viewports I can zoom in just on that element if that's what I need to do this uh, concludes the first tutorial and I'll see you at the next one thanks